Okay, this presentation is about in-text citations, and we are going to talk about what they are, how to use them, and why you need to use them. In-text citations. An in-text citation tells your reader where you got your information. This is very important. It validates the information in your paper. And they usually look like this. Last name first, and then the year of a publication in parentheses. So I provide an example in this slide. I've got scales 2023 in parentheses. It's just as simple as that. Use an in-text citation when you state facts in your paper. And your most of your paper is going to be factual, so you're going to need a lot of in-text citations. You're going to be using sources like the videos I assign, the textbook, the supplemental readings, and additional approved sources. If you get your information from a source, you must cite it. And you should be getting your information from sources. That's the purpose of writing an essay, is to study that information. So again, this means that the majority of the information in your essay, midterm, or final must be followed by an in-text citation. Here is my little bit of instructions from part of your writing guide or part of your, your instructions for your paper. And I give you another example of how to use an in-text citation right there where it says scales 12 or scales 2012, all right? And another one, scales 2012 at the end of the paragraph. Don't be afraid to use an in-text citation at an end of a paragraph. Let's just say you get the whole paragraph from one source. You can just use one in-text citation at the end of the paragraph. You shouldn't do that in general. You should try to use multiple sources within your paragraphs. But still, whether you are citing information at the end of the paragraph or you're citing information from the whole paragraph, you can put an in-text citation at the end of a paragraph. Normally, the in-text in citation will be at the end of the sentence where you state your fact. All right, and again here, and finally, at the bottom of this example, we have a real example of um, information cited from a real source, not just my name. Um, in this book, Haviland, um, there was the author, it was one author, the first author, but there are many authors. If you're going to have a citation for a source with many authors, um, more than two, you will write the name of the first author listed, and then et al, and then the year. So this little example gave you lots of information about how to use in-text citations, as well as what to do if there are many authors. As you can see as well, in these in-text citations, there's no title, and there is no website link, and there is no page number. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Okay, we are back at the Purdue Writing Lab, looking at some citation basics. Uh, the Purdue Writing Lab is at owl.purdue.edu, Purdue Online Writing Lab, and there are many good um, references here uh, for different writing tips, okay? So I'm just going to read this little section first, and it references, references APA format. You don't have to follow APA format for your entire paper, but uh, this is a good guide for the way I want you to use citations in your paper. When using APA format, follow the author date, me date method of in-text citation. This means that the author's last name and the year of publication for the source should appear in the text, for example, Jones 1998 in parentheses. One complete reference for each source should appear in the reference list at the end of the paper. That last sentence is referring to the references or bibliography. I may or may not make another video uh, to tell you about references or, bi or bibliography. They are going to be in the writing guide or midterm slash final instructions um, that I have assigned to you if you're taking my class. Now, next paragraph. If you are referring to an idea from another work but not directly quoting the material or making reference to an entire book, article, or other book work, you only have to make reference to the author and year of publication and not the page number. So I do not allow direct quotes because I find that students overuse them and quote too much information and too long sections. So you always need to cite no matter how much you're using from a source. Uh, and I'm usually not asking you to use the page number because I don't allow direct citations or direct quotes. Okay. <clears throat> do, 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 do. All right. That is enough of that summary for now. This, the rest of this is about quotations, and if you want to learn more about quotations for the purposes of another class, 
This is a good resource. In general, you need to paraphrase or summarize, and I've talked about this in the plagiarism and originality paper. So even if you're plagiarizing, uh, not plagiarizing, even if you're paraphrasing and summarizing, you still need to cite your source. So here it says, if you are paraphrasing an idea from another work, you only have to make reference to the author and year of publication. So you still need to cite in your in-text citation. You may leave out the page numbers. All right, that is it for this page. Please refer back to the Purdue OWL website if you would like more information on in-text citations and refer back to your writing guide or instructions that I have provided for you uh, for more information as well. All right, some pros, some benefits to in-text citations include the fact that they validate your information and learning. They prove to me that you made source use of your approved sources, like your textbook, supplemental readings, and assigned videos. Don't be afraid to oversight. Uh, it's never too many, never too many in-text citations. It's never a bad thing. Uh, if, in one paragraph, if you've got many sentences in a row from, from one source, you don't have to cite each sentence. You can just cite the last sentence at the end of that series, but I'm not going to penalize you for over-citing. But one thing to remember is make sure all the sources that you do cite are in your references section or bibliography. All right, and I'll talk about that either in your writing instructions, your writing guide, or in a different presentation. The references section is also called the bibliography. To conclude, you must cite your sources with in-text citations. This is an important skill, not just for this class, but for college writing in general. Thank you for watching.